It was. It felt very exciting, and those early days of Sven were quite a good time to watch. Oh, brilliant! One, two, one, two. Oi, oi! How are we doing? Oh. That's good. Do you know what I mean? There was a tough crowd on Friday night. Almost as if they didn't want us to do this. But <laughs> so we've invited everyone we work with today. Um, welcome to Reminding You Why You Love Football. Live from Hotel Mundial, we've had a fantastic week. Um, people have been blown away by the space. We've been blown away by the response. We're all on fumes now, uh, but we've got one more day to go. And um, by popular demand, because we knew we were going to be faced with a, a room full of people in England shirts, we are going to do a very special... Very short, 30-minute England special of reminding you why you love football. Oi! Oh. In Gerland. <laughs> um, we, had some, we had an England playlist on there, which is um, Seb's very own playlist that he listens to every morning when he's getting ready. <laughs> it's my alarm on the iPhone. Yeah, if he hasn't listened to Vindaloo before 9am, something's wrong. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to ask them all there. Vindaloo's probably my favourite England song. It's not the, the one most people would pick, but... It's just fucking ridiculous, and I don't think any other country could produce a song like that, for good or bad. It would be easy to say England's Irie by Black Grape, but I'm going to go for Vindaloo just for the ridiculousness of it. Seb, surprise us. Uh, I'm a child of Italian 90, so I would oh, say... Uh, for <laughs> World in Motion, <laughs> which also fe featured my favourite England shirt, um, We Don't Need to The best thing about World in Motion, if none of you have ever heard it, they had um, auditions to do the John Barnes part. And there's tape out there of Peter Beardsley doing the John Barnes bit. Yeah. It's one of the worst things you'll ever hear. Do you want me to do my impression of it? No. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Seb, was Italian Night one of your formative footballing experiences? Has been said, yeah. You should talk about it more. I should talk about it yeah. more often, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. What's, um, <laughs> what's your favourite England song, James? Um, I think it is probably Sven, 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 Goran Eriksson. Just because it reminds me of a moment where the lunatics were in charge of the asylum. <laughs> it was just, it was who, chaos. Who it did that madness. song? Yeah. Oh, no idea, I can't remember what their name is. Does anyone know who sung that? Yes. Sorry, say it on the mic. Bell and Sperling. There we go, how are they doing now? Whatever happened to Bell and Sperling? <laughs> Do you know? Um, Matt probably... Are you, uh, were you in Bell and Sperling? <laughs> <laughs> they, they Bell and Sperling, everybody? They re-released it for the 2018 World Cup, featuring, and you'll never guess, uh, Neil Razor Ruddock. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they did. that's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> did he even play for England at a national tournament? Razor? Razor. No. No. I wonder what he's doing today. Oh. I wonder what part of London he's being hoard out in, eating pints yeah. before an England game. <laughs> Uh, later on, Neil Ruddock's going to eat a Seb's garage from Dom Subs. <laughs> We're all going to try and get into his shorts. Uh, Tommy? Uh, it's quite a boring answer. It was on just now, but Three Lions. It reminds me of my childhood. 96 version, good. 98 version, what? maybe Reminds better. you of your childhood, does it? 30 years of hurt. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my life, Owen. <laughs> Not my childhood. Yeah, 30 years of, of hurt. The last four have been quite good. But yeah, three lines, amazing. I love the footage of Euro 96 where Badil and Skinner, where the camera pans to them in the audience and they're losing their shit at Wembley in, in front. It's the semi-final, Germany. Yeah, I often feel like I shouldn't talk about Euro 96 because people are bored of hearing about it. But then I remember there's a lot of people who actually weren't there and it was, it was a lot of fun. But all right, so we're going to move on with some England favourites. We're going to move on to shirts. Uh, I'm going to start with you, James Bird. What is your favourite England shirt? What is the best England shirt in your eyes? I didn't want to go cliched and I, di I didn't want to sort of go to, to 98 or 2000. So you're going to talk about yourself? Talk about myself for a little while. But the Euro 2021 one, where it's the back to Nike with the, the logo in the centre, blue crew neck, uh, Nike tick. I just thought it was very smart. I thought it was a very nice piece of work. It was very smart. What about you, Seb? I'm going to go for the home shirt this year, purely based on the wonderful, wonderful, playful uh, interpretation of the St. George's Cross, Fantastic. because it pissed off all the right people, and it also made me realise 
all the people that I follow on social media, and it might be an echo chamber, but it made me realise I was following good people who were saying it was a good thing. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to go uh, a bit on PC for a second, but nothing whoa, bad. Whoa. No, but there was a tweet that day when the um, a graphic designer said, "I'll tell you what. If I was Nike, what I'd do is um, redraw the flag as." <laughs> Two XL bullies shagging each other up the arse and then print that. <laughs> that it was a pretty good tweet, to be honest, and it's, I think it summed up the mood of the, uh, yeah, the right thinking of the people tweet of the tweet nation. Of the Tom? France 98, home shirt, Beckham getting sent off against Argentina. It's full of uh, both good memories, but also tragedy and obviously a country losing its shit over... A, a silly red card, basically, but it's a beautiful shirt, especially the all-white version that they wore in that round two in France 98. Yes, they did. Yeah, I would say if I... Um, there's a lot of England shirts I've liked, but the grey one, um, the grey umbro for Euro 96, it's a, it might be an easy choice, but it was, it was seemingly a bit of a... a bit of a Damascus moment in, in, in brands designing kits to be worn elsewhere and to be worn to the pub. Um, it was meant to look good with jeans. I don't think it did. No. But what colour jeans? Like blue, light blue. Yeah, of. light blue, boot cut, like the ones you wear, Tommy. <laughs> I don't make the rules. <laughs> I don't live by the rules. Um, I don't even recognise the rules. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. Seb, what is your favourite England goal? Because you've probably seen them all. There is a lot, but one thing, I, one goal that gets. Uh, mis not mistaken, sorry, that's the wrong word. One, th one goal that gets forgotten for me is the Daniel Sturridge. Euro 2016, last minute winner against Wales. Um, personally, I was uh, behind the goal amongst the hordes of England fans. Um, and I should say that Seb spent three weeks before going, I'm absolutely gutted to have got an England ticket. I don't want to go to an England game. My wife's worried there's going to be fighting. Only to be seen dancing behind the goal, absolutely leathered, <laughs> doing the Wrigley Arms dance after Daniel Sturridge scored. Seb, 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 come on. Do yeah. the dance. Come on. Do no. the dance. <laughs> no one needs to see that. No it's, one needs to see that. He'll, take, he'll take Xbox's eyes out with his <laughs> arms. <laughs> no, uh, I, uh, no, but I think obviously everyone forgets They're that. They're paying clients, Seb. Yeah, I Leave know. it. <laughs> <laughs> everyone forgets that because of the, uh, what happened out against Iceland. But it was, it, England played really well. And just that shit, because that end at, um, in Lons is so steep and so mental. It was like, I know people... Young people, maybe even old people like myself these days, use the word limbs. It is incredible. Uh, it is incredible. Uh, and uh, it, that's, that's, that's why it's one of my favourite England goals. Old people like myself. Uh, 43. <laughs> 43, I should know better. Limbs like it's some secret dialect. Tell the crowd your favourite English goal, James. Um, I think my favourite England goal is, is a goal that didn't actually happen. Um, Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the Raheem you had one Sterling job. ghost goal, it was, I was in my second year of university and, you know, free, free from Wolverhampton, living in East London, thinking that I was the bee's knees when I was certainly not the bee's knees. But about 50 of us crammed into a flat and when, when we thought that goal went in, there was sort of chaos for a minute and a half. And then when the dust settled, there was a hole in the roof. And one guy was just wandering around going, I've lost a tooth. Can, I, <laughs> can anyone see a tooth? Was it in the roof? <laughs> it, it was tooth in the roof. In the roof. Well, his, his tooth was in the ceiling. And so, well, we don't know where the tooth was. That is. Was um, it a false tooth or a real tooth? A real tooth. Oh, no. A real life tooth. You've ruined it. That's brought the mood down. Yeah. Um, but no, that, and it, it was also Raheem, sort of, you know, a, a, a young prospect who we were really excited for, and, and us thinking that that goal had gone in. A whole tooth Tom. gone. My favourite England goal would probably be Rooney's second goal against Croatia in Euro 2004. Plays a beautiful 1 2 with Michael Owen. And I did watch the Wayne Rooney documentary on BBC iPlay, which you highly recommended me, James. It's very good. It's and very good. Basically, the Rooney documentary on BBC iPlayer has Michael Owen as a talking head who makes everything in this Wayne Rooney documentary about himself. No, Michael Owen. He said, what? Oh, wasn't that pass good by me, by the way? And, and whenever uh, he speaks about Rooney, he constantly compares it to him being 18 rather than talking about Wayne. Yeah, this is what it's like for me. Talking about work when, when James is there. <laughs> he'll, he'll find a way to make it about him. <laughs> but Owen, it's probably Owen's, because I've done it. Owen's pissed off because 
He's, he's acting like he's not pissed off, but he's saying, I should be the one on the end of it. He should be the number 10. I love that pettiness, but yeah, great memories of that goal. 14 years old, lovely summer, Euro 2004. Why is Wayne Rooney so underrated? I don't get it. I mean, it's, it's crazy. That, that documentary in terms of Rooney talking about himself being a teenager and thinking that he was the best player in the world is just beautiful to watch. Like, it's, he speaks so brilliantly about football. Um, it's, a, it's a shame that he's, he's not a good football manager. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Oh, Give him a chance. On. Give come him a chance. I think he's had a chance, Tommy. Does, <laughs> does, um, he's had a couple. Couple. Does, um, does Wayne Rooney hate his family or love football? <laughs> because... Because he's gone to manage Plymouth now. He just keeps legging it as far away as possible. <laughs> I think Colleen it's keeps him accountable when he's at home. So he keeps going further away. So he can ditch the My Fitness pal. Yeah, yeah. yeah Washington it's, was far. Devon's, Devon is a lovely part of the world, to be fair, though. So, you know. My favourite England goal would be uh, Steve Bull's debut goal for England in 1989 or 19, 1989, I think. Called up from the third division. Uh, didn't think he'd play. Didn't think he was good enough. Um, 3,000 Wolves fans made the journey there. We're all in the, in, the, in the corner of Hampton Park with a T-shirt on saying, Bully's going to get you. And uh, he scored. Quite memorable. Still can't get, he still can't get his head around it today. This was, this was the time period where my dad had a hat with two horns coming out of it that said Bully across the front of it. <laughs> Unfortunately, your mum had got it him to stop him headbutting Wolves everywhere he went. <laughs> But Owen, you, you interviewed Steve Ball. I did, James, Fam yeah. Famously. Famously, yeah. Um, what did he say about that? Because there's a brilliant, brilliant quote about he said him being it, picked as a, a third division striker for England. He said, and in, in the West Midlands dialect, he said, Owen, a call get me hat on. <laughs> which, which means he was very proud and his head had swollen. And he kept saying, a call get me hat on. Which is why we could never use the audio, because no one would understand him. <laughs> no, Steve, Steve he walks Ball downstairs every day. Looks at his 13 England caps, his signed shirt from Italian 90, and says, I couldn't believe that was me. Oh, that's brilliant, isn't it? That's the good right. stuff. Yeah. That Class. is so good. It's a bit like you do with your Mundial covers, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> walk, walk down the stairs, 30-odd covers, 10 years. Oh, where's the bloody time gone? But no, he's it, Steve Ball, I've got to say, actually, what issue was that, Owen? Issue four, five? I can't even remember now. What? Three. Three, three I think. Three. Yeah, yeah. Italian so, 90, issue three. But it's one we still talk about, and yeah... Someone like Steve, a third division player playing for England is, is mental, isn't it, when you think about it? Absolutely bonkers. All right, I'm Charlie Cooper. You might recognise me from BBC Show This Country, but I'm here to tell you how much I love Mundial magazine. For me, it's the fanzine of football, documenting the best of football culture forever. I'm very proud to admit I've been a long-term subscriber of Mundial for years now. Um, but if you subscribe, you don't just get the magazine, right? You get loads of other perks. Too many to mention, in fact. So join Club Mundial at mundialmag.com. And um, we're going to finish with your favourite England game, or the most memorable England game to you. Ooh. I, I, should, I should probably say how I ended up in casualty. Uh, um, the Euro 96 semi-final but it's for another time if anyone wants to know they can ask me at the bar yeah <laughs> please, I, please do ask Owen at the bar about that one I'd like to hear a little bit about it no. uh, I just ended up through the WH Smith window accidentally yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't security glass as we originally thought it was just plate glass yeah <laughs> so I got thrown straight through it um, <laughs> what's your favourite game Tom? My favourite England game uh, is one in the fairly recent memory. For some reason, 2018 feels like about two or three years ago, but 2018 World Cup, where we killed the penalty shootout curse that we've had for many years. England versus Colombia, uh, second round. I was at the cricket watching England versus India around a load of Indian fans and just sneaking away to catch bits of the game. And then... Me and my brother, who is filming me right now, went back to the quad in Old Trafford, the Quadrant Pub, and uh, managed to catch the penalty shootout with a lot of friends. It was when I was very much with the drink. Quiet night at the library? <laughs> Quiet night in the library, me thinks. My liege. James. No, it was great. Well, I was going to talk about 
England Argentina 1998. But you you said all of the things that I wanted to say. So Sorry, man. I think uh, 2002 against Brazil. I think that anyone who was at school at that time can remember sort of either being given the morning off or having a big television sort of brought into to the hall of the school. And for me, just as, as an 11 year old, the iconography of it was incredible. The players that were playing that day were sort of still superheroes in my head as an 11 year old. Um, amazing moments, Ronaldinho, you know, lobbing seaman and then getting sent off. Danny Mills being a lunatic. Um, a really sort of formative memory in terms of why I love football, which isn't just what happens on the pitch, but all the sort of kits and iconography around it. Uh, good answer, which sounds like one you've done before. <laughs> <laughs> Seb? Uh, England v Denmark, semi-final, last Euros. Everyone, I mean, there's a bloody documentary about the final, which is complete nonsense. But anyway, the semi-final was a joyous, joyous occasion. Wembley Way was full of people having fun, not, you know, people were with drink, but not going over the top. You've done well to change your look after the uh, notoriety for putting that flare up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> but England reaching a final, uh, it was, it was a, a special place to be. So, again, forget the negative stuff about the final and losing it. The semi-final was a... Was Hang on, a Seb. You, you went to the final with Jofra Archer, Noel yep. Gallagher, Goldie. Who yep. else? Bernard Sumner. Bernard Mick, Sumner. Mick Jagger. Stella Jagger. McCartney. Uh, Dynamo the Magician, which was very hard because I hate magicians. Oh my God. Even the good ones. Why? Um, Why? Was he doing, he, he wasn't he, doing card tricks on the bus, was he? Dynamo. No, Give it a no, rest, mate. No. Uh, he, oh, oh, Seb oh. thinks magicians are frauds. Uh, well, they are. They're con, they're con men, aren't they? G magicians. Absolute con men. Joffre had a sleep, didn't he, on the bus? Yeah, yeah. Joffre had a sleep on the bus. Uh, it could have been the best night of my life because the Adidas apart box. From, was, apart from the day of your wedding or your, the birth of your first child. <laughs> it could have been one of, one of the best days of my life. Uh, top three. Top very, three. Yeah. Top three. Uh, top five, maybe. I mean, I'm a top five man. You know that. Um, I, yeah, it could have been really good, but it wasn't. And do you know what? Life's a bitch. But yeah, I think I'm pretty sure, and I mentioned this before. Life's a bitch. Goldie, life's a pitch, yeah. Goldie, uh, Goldie gave me COVID, because when Luke Shaw scored, I hugged Goldie, who was sat next to me, weirdly. This is very weird. And uh, yeah, next day, the old uh, COVID test, and absolutely rotten I was. And I think I blame Goldie, who was lovely apart from giving me COVID, to be fair. That should be the title of your book. Goldie made me, Goldie gave me COVID. <laughs> and other stories from yeah. football's front line. Ah, oh, who'd buy that? Come on, Sebastian put Dennis your hands White. up. Yes, yes, Three sales, yes, yes. four sales, five sales, I tell you what. Yeah, Go yeah. <laughs> Gold, Goldie, of course, from the, uh, the same West Midlands talent factory as me and Owen Blackhurst. Seb, you should know we're not going to sell books. We've been trying to sell magazines to this lot for years. That's true, yeah. Mag yeah. <laughs> Please buy a magazine. And he started talking to us when we did a podcast. My favourite England game is after the horror show of Euro 2000 and Kevin Keegan taking one of the worst squads of all time and playing that shit ass Dennis Wise on the left wing. Um, England obviously beat Germany. It was like Steven Gerrard's coming out party on the world stage, and um, he showed he could boss the show and boss the midfield for internationally as well as at club level. And um, it, was, it felt very exciting, and those early days of Sven were quite a good time to watch. Oh, brilliant. I, you know who was also on telly that day, at lunchtime before the England game? Was it you, Seb? No, uh, well, sort of, because Nuneaton played Yeovil and I was there. Um, also that day, Somerset were in the cricket final and they won that day. Uh, I had a little treble, Yeovil, Somerset, England. What a day that was. What a day. Uh, we'll finish up with our England ins and our England outs. James, what's your in? <laughs> oh, just the, the guy with the face. The guy with the face that turns up everywhere. I know that, he, I know that he's sort of been given a bit of notoriety now and he's been What's interviewed his name? by national broadcasters but you can't just call him face man no, that's what he's called on social media. Media. that's what everyone calls him on the internet it's face man face. Well, that's his handle well no no that's it's not just what everyone handle, calls that's what face people man. Go, oh the face man's there on the front of the row the face England, man yeah. yes yeah because his face looks like it's imagine it look... paying all that money to turn up at every major sporting event and your nickname <laughs> is face man i tell you what he's got some cracking gnashers i need to know where he's got his gnashers done it's he's got a good set, head, head, of, head of hair no no he looks good he looks yeah, good yeah. It's, it's like it's... when you see a see a deer coming out the mist he looks the like he has been yeah yes <laughs> it feels special like you've seen a sprite but it's um, great I'm to put see him. face man in <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Yeah. Seb, what's your England in? My in is, um, and watch this on this massive screen that we've provided for you for the England game. Enjoy the football, obviously, but one of my favourite things uh, of an England game is to look at all the, the nondescript provincial towns. Don't worry, I come from one, so I'm allowed to say that. Yeah. Um, on various flags across the, you know... The Mansfield Maulers and stuff Ma like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You the know, Shrewsbury Shaggers. I, I saw one the other day, right? Ah, oh, it was... Sal up. M Millwall flag. There was a Millwall flag, and it was over. You could see it was a massive Millwall flag, and it was over two other England flags. Now, all I can picture is these Millwall fans turning up at, like, five, five minutes before kickoff and going, I'm putting my flag here. And then, and like, two lads from Shrewsbury going, oh, excuse me, mate. Uh, you know, but... Not saying excuse me, mate. Going, on you go, sir. On you go, Place sir. your flag yeah, yeah. where you want. Yeah. yeah, I mean, after all, no one likes them. But have a look at all the different flags. It's three it's... times the size of any other flag and yeah, said, yeah. no one likes us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In. My, my in is the guy, the England fan, doing the splits the other day. Did anyone see this? It was great. It's was, just... Uh, was, there a, was there a flare? There was not a flare anywhere to be seen, but... I'm not going to put that in. Why? You've explained it terribly. Oh, James, for... what's your out? Um, I don't have one. You don't pure, have an out? No, no, just pure positivity. You nice. don't have an out? No. No, no you no. don't? No, it's not. There's, there's nothing no. in there, no. Seb, what's uh, your out, mate? On the, on the subject of flags, because I really like flags... People who steal other people's flags to hold them upside down to put on a picture on social media. Grow up, for God's <laughs> sake. Who does that? Well, the ultras. It's an ultra thing, isn't it? They nick, there's loads of pictures this week of Serbian fans with England flags upside down. Has your neighbour nicked your flag and taunting <laughs> you over the fence? Uh, what? Has your neighbour nicked your flag? No, yeah, is yeah. That, that, my, my out is now Seb talking about flags. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> enough. Flag shagger. My in um, is Jude and Trent's uh, wolf celebration. Oi, that oi. Was class. Brilliant. Two young lads living life, loving it, coming Two. up with stupid celebrations. That's as good as it gets for me. Yes. And my out is every celebration Seb does when we're watching football. <laughs> oh. Give us one now, Sebby. Huh? What's your best celebration? No, no, no. He'll injure himself or someone else. I don't yeah, want yeah, it. yeah. I'll be at the back there during the game when England win 3-0, so you know, there might be a few celebrations. Uh, this has been reminding you why I love football. Thanks for coming, thanks for listening. Thank you. Cheers. Enjoy the football and remember, throw shapes, not pints. If I see one beer go, you're out. Thanks very much, Thank you. everyone. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers up, for the support. Up the red. Reminding you why you love football is a Monday Alton Football co-production. Produced by Tommy Stewart and Seb White, hosted by me, Owen Blackhurst, and recorded on the run.